Welcome everyone, this is Alex for The Coaster Spot and today we're gonna do a full tour of Kings Island, the entire thing. And uh, we also already did a tour of Soak City down there. There's a separate entrance, but you can also access it from inside of the amusement park uh, via a walkway or the train. So uh, yeah, we're gonna go inside and show you all the things you can do. Uh, some of the shows, some of the food. My, uh, I'll show you all the rides, my recommendations for food. Uh, I won't point out every food stand, but the ones I think that are worthwhile. And uh, we'll put uh, International Street at the end if you wanna see some of the shops there. Uh, and uh, Kitty Land will also be at the end, but that's the second half of the park, if you didn't know. Everything to the right of the Eiffel Tower is pretty much for kids. It's huge and one of the best in the country for kids. When you enter in, you get this fantastic view of the Eiffel Tower down there. It's a one-third scale replica of the one in Paris. So uh, that you can board that right down there. Uh, you get to go up and you can spend as much time up there as you would prefer to. And as I said, lots of shops here, International Street. Uh, lots of uh, cafes, food, and a lot of that stuff. And, and as we're skipping International Street for the time being, we're gonna go around the park clockwise. Uh, if you need Fastlane, Redemption, uh, you can get it here, or you can buy them in any of the stores. And their lockers here for the day, $10 after 5 p.m., 22 for standard, 27 for large, and jumbo is 32. Wheelchairs are over here. If you need the first aid and a parents and a nursing station, that's gonna to be towards the end of the tour. It's in Planet Snoopy. And uh, if you want to get a wristband for your child, if they're just about to hit one of those milestones, you come here in the morning. King's Island Theater is currently playing Phantom Theater Encore, which is a tribute to the original Dark Ride, which is really cool. And one of the ride vehicles is right here. That's so cool. The first section that we're coming to is the Action Zone. We'll talk all about this in a moment, but first we have to talk about Invertigo, one of the park's hanging roller coasters. This is one of 16 roller coasters here at Kings Island. It is also the only of its kind in North America and one of only three in the world. It is based on a very popular ride called a boomerang, but this one is below the track like all other ones are not. And you have this back-to-back facing seating so you get to see your friend and pro tip you want to sit on the far side of the station there that is where it's gonna be the smoothest if you're sitting towards us right here in the station that can be quite rough so these people are having a good time those people in the back probably not as much first we're gonna talk about some food items before we talk about the four rides that are here the chicken shack is one of the best places to get chicken. It's hand breaded. Ask for the secret sauce. That is the secret to this chicken shack. It's very good. And it's included on the meal plan. Congo Falls is the park's shoot the shoots ride. It's the one where it's the log bloom that makes the giant splash. The ride can be kind of freaky. I, I would suggest if you want a real thrill, ride in the back seat. There is absolutely no restraint. And keep your hands up. Uh, you will go flying on that double dip and feel like you're gonna fall out. It's uh, quite terrifying. It's not as tall as another ride up in Northern Ohio, but I prefer this one actually, just because of that air time you get on the double dip. <laughs> Here's the park's drop tower, literally just named drop tower, scream zone. Welcome to yeah. Kings Island. Anyways, it's about 300 feet tall. It has a really good uh, drop with that air time. And uh, it does spin on the way up, so you get a cool 360 view of the surrounding area from all the way up there. So it's kind of like an observation ride as well. And then Coaster Connection is where you get a lot of really great coaster merchandise. We'll show you other places that you can get some great merchandise. There's other places in the park, but uh, we'll give you a quick sample of all that. The half on the left is nothing but van stuff, but if you ignore all that stuff and go this way, you have Kings Island stuff, and then more nanos. You get the nanos in a bunch of places around the park, but here are some of them. Here's the park's B&M Inverted Coaster, built in 2014. It is the world's longest inverted roller coaster. It will flip you upside down seven times, all in different ways. It's very intense. It's six inversions in a row, basically, with no break. So uh, 
very flippy. One of the better inverted coasters out there. It does have vest restraints, like newer B&Ms, not the hard over the shoulder restraints, which uh, it depends on your preference. I personally like them, but uh, they're more accommodating for sure. And it has a little bit of a lower height requirement. Most B&Ms require 54 inches. This is 52. And the loop goes right around the hotel, which is really neat. This, of course, sits on the former site of the the former world's tallest and first looping wooden roller coaster, Son of East, and there's an internal flame dedicated to it. And just to let you know, there are a few rides in the park that require you to put the bag into a locker. It is two hours for two dollars. Good, they have not increased the price on that. And uh, we'll just list them out right now. Banshee, Orion, Flight of Fear, Mystic Timbers are the coasters that require you to put your stuff in a locker. Here is the park's Sky Coaster, Extreme Sky Flyer. This is an upcharge attraction. It will cost you a little bit of money. So these days, Extreme Sky Flyer's prices are a little dynamic. It can be up to $20, today is 15, but you get suited up in a, what is closest to being described as uh, what you would be on on a hang glider, a suit. You get hooked up, you get lifted up, and then they will tell you to pull the ripcord, which you have to do yourself, to uh, initiate the giant swing of, I believe, 168 feet tall. Up to three riders can go at a time, but one or two can go as well. Three, two, one, fly. Here's the park's suspended roller coaster where you're hanging below the track this time, but you can swing back and forth. It's a very uncommon ride. Uh, only about 12 were built and only four remain in North America. It's manufactured by Aerodynamics and it was actually the second attempt at a suspended roller coaster. The first attempt, the prototype, was also named the Bat. This was originally called Top Gun, then Flight Deck, and then uh, renamed it the Bat in honor of the original. Uh, that was over where the old Vortex used to be. And uh, yeah, it lasted like two seasons because it had so many engineering problems. Uh, one thing to tell you is <laughs> it is a little bit of a trek to get back there because uh, the station is uh, where it should be. It should be over here, but unfortunately it's at the far end of the ride. So uh, yeah, it takes a little bit of time to get back here, but usually it does not have much of a line. Also, one fun thing to do is when you're waiting in line, look down here. Usually you see some deer or even beaver uh, hanging around near the forest line. Once you come off the ride, the line is short. You can use this gate to just get on again. There's another one just in a moment down there too. So be sure to give another ride since uh, it's so good and it's uh, such a long walk. The ice cream zone is where you can get that famous blue ice cream, the blueberry ice cream. Uh, it is so good. This is not the only location you can get it. You can get it over in Camp Snoopy as well. We'll show you that. Uh, here are your prices. Our final ride in the action zone is Delirium. Swings you 137 feet. It's their frisbee type attraction. You sit facing outward with your feet dangling as you rock back and forth like a parrot chip but uh, spinning at the same time on a disc. So uh, a quite fast ride. It's like 60 something miles per hour, I believe. So uh, yeah, it is uh, not for the faint of heart. And before we get on to our next section, let's talk about the Fest House. This is one of the other places I'd love to talk about. Maybe not the best food in my opinion, but uh, great atmosphere. Here is the Fest House. It's patterned after a German Fest House, obviously. Uh, and this year they actually have shows, which they have not had in quite a few years, even before 2020. I do not believe they had any shows. But uh, this is your sing and dance type show, uh, so you can get your food and uh, take it all in. I love this. Your food options are Panda Express, which is on the dining plan. And then over here is the big food court. Cheeseburgers, pizza, chicken fingers. So uh, coming out the other side of the fast house, you have this awesome topiary. That's a beer stein. Look at that. That's awesome. And you have this awesome cuckoo clock basically up here. It does go off on the hour. It's pretty fun. 
I love anything German. And the show is the uh, 70s on demand. There it is. Over here is the Viking Fury, which is a giant, like, huge, like, I think it seats like 40 people or something like that. Swinging ship and uh, great placement where it swings right over the water. Definitely want to try to hit the ends. I believe you can queue up for any row you want to. And uh, if you want the best thrill, you want to be on the ends, not in the middle. So that's where you swing the highest. One of the new attractions for this year is a whole new themed area called Adventure Port, which includes two new rides and a bunch of rethemes and a whole new area. Uh, this is the area between the Delarium and Racer, basically. And it used to just not have much of identity. They removed the slingshot last year. And now our first ride is Cargo Loco, which is a standard teacup ride. However, themed to barrels and you're sitting in the barrels with different types of... Uh, materials so coffee beans tequila sugar cane really fun and it's a ride for pretty much everyone if you didn't know it's a height requirement yeah almost everybody can ride this ride and then right down the way from that is going to be soul spin which is a zamperla endeavor this is basically a modern take of the old enterprise rides but instead of being in a little cage you are going to be hanging down with an overhead restraint feet dangling the whole ride lifts up and tilts 90 degrees and you go upside down. So great addition and uh, it should be open by the time you're watching this video. And across from those two rides is going to be the beer garden. Here's footage from it last year. They have uh, spoofed it up, making it the Mercano. I believe it has pretty much the same lineup of drinks, though. So great place to hang out on the water. And uh, lots of new theming in the water around this whole area and including on our next ride. Here's Adventure Express, a aerodynamics mine train, one of the last ones to be built and one of the best ones. It has two lift hills. Some really cool theming in the tunnels. It was redone last year and is uh, looking better than ever. And this year it was painted. It's a great family ride for everybody. Definitely give it a ride. And if you want an extra thrill, people always talk about the beast at night. This is a fantastic night ride. And I mentioned more theming on this ride. It looks great from the pictures I've seen on and off ride, especially the entrance. The entrance sign was always very boring. So it's uh, very nice to see that this old ride has gotten more attention. And across from Adventure Express is gonna be the former Hank's Mexican Grill. It's now just called Enrique's and it's also a Mexican restaurant. Uh, have not had a chance to try that out in its new or old form. If you wanna see a updated tour, we will do one the next time I visit the park, which may be next year or maybe later this year. I don't know. Hit that bell for instant notifications when a video comes out. Coney Mall is patterned after the old Coney Island, which is where this park's roots came from. So Coney Island still exists in some form. Recently, it actually closed all its amusement park rides, uh, and it's just a water park, but it dates back to the 1920s with lots of roller coasters and rides, and uh, had problems with flooding over and over again, and they decided to uh, basically move the park and build it into what is Kings Island. So some of the rides, and I'll point a few of them out, are actually still from uh, Coney Island, and uh, are over 50 years old, obviously. One of the original rides to the park is the Racer, also cited as one of the coasters to kind of bring back a renaissance to the wooden roller coaster boom in the 70s. Uh, built in 1972, obviously with the park. Uh, it's a dual track coaster where you get to race your friends side by side, blue racer, red racer. Unfortunately, they don't go backwards anymore. And then, uh, of course, this year they have a bunch of cool photos showing off its history and what it's looked like over the years. So. Cody Mall also has a bunch of different games that you can do along the middle here. Here's this monster, which is one of those Coney Allen rods that dates back obviously a very long time. It has six different arms and you uh, spin on three different axes and uh, it lifts you up in kind of, kind of almost weightlessness feeling uh, as you go around. It could be a very same ride or you can spin like nothing else and uh, when you're uh, hanging out for the other two sections to be loading, you can actually use your body weight like those two boys are right now to spin the entire thing. Usually it doesn't spin all four of them, but uh, that's happening. So the Coney Island barbecue is a few years old. Uh, one of the best, I, I mean, I keep saying this, but King's Island food is just really, really good all over. I have the meal plan and I, every time I come, it's always like a, 
hard to pick what I want, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, 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 it's it's so good. And I love the the, the core in here. And then it is cafeteria style, so you get your food real quick. There are your places and all your sides, and then your entrees, where there's some chicken, some sandwiches, some sausages, pork pans. And uh, right now, my very town roast. All that amazing food. Here's another classic fair ride, a scrambler! Where you twist in two different directions, and you're kind of whipped across the ride platform as you go along. There are, I believe, two locations to get Skyline Chili. They do have Skyline Chili, unfortunately not open today, so that made the choice of uh, less things for me to pick from, much easier, but yeah. It's the same Skyline Chili you know around the area here at Kings Island. And one of the main arcades is here on Coney Mall, not surprisingly. So right between Coney Island Barbecue, in the scrambler, we're gonna go off Coney Mall for just one moment because this is in the center of the park and there's nowhere else to really show it to you. But uh, it's the Carousel, a classic Philadelphia Toboggan Company Carousel. Dates back, I believe, over a hundred years or, or very close to it. It is a beautiful wooden, hand-carved carousel with over 50 figurines, two chariots. It's absolutely gorgeous from the horses to the rim around it to the band organ playing and to the uh, actually beautiful carousel building as well. So, and this is not being played by a speaker like a lot of parks have uh, reduced them to. It's actually an antique organ being played for the music. And just to get your bearings before we go to Coney Mall, here's the end of International Street where you do pick up the elevator up to the top of the Eiffel Tower. And while we're here, right around the tower is uh, Tower Gardens, which is a nice little place to relax. Next up is the Dodgems there, bumper car arena. It's a really large one, as you can see, in temporary. Uh, it's a circle. Uh, I believe you're supposed to go, yeah, you're supposed to go one way. But I see lots of going on. There are so many cars in this thing. Like at least like 30 cars. It's quite mesmerizing to watch all this going. And uh, we're going to head across Coney Mall again. And kind of uh, leave Coney Mall once again because we have to go to the newest section of the park. Area 72. Home of two of the roller coasters that are absolutely fantastic. But first is the Zephyr. This is your way swinger attraction where you're lifted up, you're swinging around and you get tilted. And as I said, Area 72 has Orion, the park's giga coaster, 287 feet tall with a 300 foot drop. You can get a lot of your Orion merchandise right here, as you can see. And once again, more of those nanos. They're everywhere. You can't miss them. So yeah, Area 72 is obviously themed to like a Area 51 take on it. There's a pass underneath Racer to get to them. But uh, also like one of my favorite things is just listen to the music in this area. It's a really good soundtrack done by Imascore out of Germany. They create really cool soundtracks uh, for theme parks, mostly in Europe, but Kings Island is one of the few in America that has elected to uh, go that way. So Flight of Fear is a premier rides launch roller coaster. It was actually one of the first, or the first roller coaster to use uh, linear induction motors and magnets to launch you to about 50 miles per hour in about five or so seconds. I'll show you a video of a ride that is identical. It's outside, so you can see what it looks like. Uh, it's a big knot of track, four inversions, three of them begin the ride off, and then a bunch of twists and turns and then uh, a corkscrew at the end. But then with Orion, takes you up and drops you 300 feet, and then over 5,000 feet of track. Insane second hill, it just flips you on your side. The turnaround back there is actually 200 feet tall. Like, uh, the turnaround at the far end of the ride is taller than most roller coasters in the world. 
But that's how big and furious this ride it is. Definitely an amazing coaster. One not to be missed. And as I said, these are two of the rides that do require a locker to ride if you have a bag or something that cannot fit in your pocket. So on the left here, this little uh, facade here looks very nice during the uh, summer, but just a uh, little bit of a plug for the video, but we've done Halloween haunt videos and this is Kill Mart during October and September. And it is one of the best haunts we've ever done at a regional amusement park and uh, really, really enjoy it. If you're gonna go to haunt, definitely hit that one up. So next, coming up next is the uh, 2019 edition. Uh, it was to bring it back, an attraction they removed back in 2004. It's the antique cars. Absolutely fun ride for everyone. Kids love to be able to drive their car on this track. You're on a rail, so you can't go too crazy. It has some cool theming with lots of nods to both Kings Island history and some Cedar Fair stuff too for other parks. But as you can see, kids love it. So as we come to the end of Coney Mall, there's the entrance to the said antique cars. Then we have the Windseeker, which is your uh, 300 foot tall swing ride. You do have a lap bar, not a little chain, a little seat. It's not a very reliable ride. So if you see it open, you probably want to go ride it. It uh, does not like the wind or the weather or lots of other things. And our final ride on Coney Mall is Shake, Rattle, Roll, which is a Trioka type ride. Uh, it's got three arms, they swing out. They lift up in a, kind of a scrambler motion, but with lots of added bonuses to it. And finally is the Jukebox Diner, which was renovated this year. Uh, it's somewhere I wouldn't even have thought about eating before, and now it's someone that I would consider it. Uh, here's everything you can do. And it's uh, cafeteria style now, like a lot of the restaurants. And uh, so you get your food real quick. As we enter into Rivertown, the one attraction over here on the way to the rest of the area is Backlot Sun Coaster. It's originally themed to the Italian job. Uh, it's a launch coaster with some theming. It does a upward helix with a launch, lots of theming, dark portions. Uh, yeah, if you know anything about the Italian job, the entire theme makes a lot of sense. As we head to the most famous attraction in the park. You're gonna see Diamondback. We'll show you the entrance later, but we'll talk about it now. It is the park's hyper coaster, over 200 feet tall. Uh, and uh, it, it, it packs a punch for sure. It's a really good coaster, lots of good airtime, some strong helixes, and uh, a amazing splashdown finale where the sends a huge like 20 foot wave into the air. So, yes. If you have any question how to find the park's most famous roller coaster, just look for the paw prints. They lead to the beast. Now, over 40 years old, it has held the record for the longest wood coaster in the world. And this year, because of some track modifications, it actually is two feet longer. It is over 7,000 feet long and uh, two lift hills, a trek through the woods, a double helix finale, four tunnels. It is an epic ride. At night, during the day, it's pretty tame. I would call Adventure Express more wild during the day than the beast is during the day. But during nighttime, it's another beast. On our way to our next road coaster is Whitewater King, the park's river raft ride. You sit in a round boat, you go around a trough filled with water, lots of hazards and waterfalls and it does its best to soak you. However, it can be completely dry or it can be completely wet. It all depends on luck. After you pass underneath the first shot of the town deck, you get to the Miami River and Kings Island Railroad. This provides transportation to the water park Soak City, which we also have a tour of, as we've mentioned before. And uh, it is a nice loop around uh, the backwoods of Kings Island. So, very fun. And here is the wonderful fourth wooden coaster at the park. We haven't checked out the third one yet, but uh, 
It's Mystic Timbers. It's not that tall. It's only like 100 feet tall. It has some really cool theming and surprises in the shed. Don't go in the shed. Built in 2017 by GCI, Great Coasters International. Uh, it is the best wood coaster here. Yes, yeah, better than the Beast. And uh, also a fantastic night ride for sure. And as I said, this is one of those rides that requires lockers. The brew house, <laughs> the Miami River Brew House, is easily the best place to eat food at Kings Island. It is so good. Uh, and so much is on the dining plan. Uh, you, uh, you order and then uh, you get, they actually bring food to you once you order. So that is absolutely fantastic. Here's a look at the entire menu. And here's the inside of Miami River Brew House. We'll show you the bar in a moment, but uh, here's a look at me working and uh, my amazing food, the BBLT. So many bees that they needed, uh, so much bacon they needed two bees. Uh, came with tater tots and they had a bunch of sauces that you could choose from. I just went to the honey mustard to dip my tots in because um, I love honey mustard. So almost, and it, this looks house made. Uh, wow. And here's that fantastic bar that's uh, hidden back here. Full bar, two mixed drinks, whole nine yards. And this place is huge, so there's always plenty of seating, and you can sit outside as well and have a cool view of Diamondback. And we've talked about it, but here's the location of Diamondback just past the brew house. Here's where you go in. And the exit store has a lot of the merchandise we've already shown you, so no need to show you it again, but you get all your coaster merchandise there. Lots of beasts and mystic timbers. Okay, so uh, let's begin the juggernaut that is going to be Planet Snoopy to show you all the rides in Planet Snoopy. I have no idea how many there are. There are so many that we are going to have to do a uh, tally. Let's do that together. So Planet Snoopy basically takes up the entire right side of the park, as I think I said at the beginning of the park tour. The first thing is Race for Your Life, Charlie Brown. Obviously right now there's a little bit of an issue there. But uh, it's a log flume, only one big drop. Nice little trip through the forest. And then you have like this 30 foot drop. Has some light theming for the Charlie Brown. Good thing that's Snoopy that always uh, squirts you. But uh, if you love a log flume, like most people do, this one is definitely worth it. Here is Linus's launcher, which is a kite flyer type of attraction. As you can see here, it can be lifted up. You're laying down in the vehicles facing the ground, flying, and then you're gonna tilt a little bit, and there it is. Here's Ace's Aerial Chase, a suspended roller coaster for kids and families. Fortunately, it is not the smoothest thing. You wanna hold on to your head, or you're gonna get head banged pretty bad. Fun fact. Essentially, has the same exact layout as Woodstock Express at Cedar Point. However, that one is above the rails, and this one is below the rails. Moving on, here is the Kite Eating Tree, which is a miniature little drop ride for the kids. Gently bounces you up and down. Here's what's like gliders, which is a flying scooters ride where you get to control your ride by swinging out and back. As you can see, how you turn your fin really determines how your ride goes. So you become quite the thrill ride if you uh, get it going pretty fast and high and then duck dive. There's one of two locations where you can get that blue ice cream right by Flying Ace Aerial Chase. Over here is a character meet and greet for the peanuts and uh here is that pathway to soak city if you want to walk between the two parks here is the inus's beetle bug the right area. Thank you. which is a mini whip which is just adorable i would love to have one of these in my backyard they're so cute just like a full-size whip but uh miniaturized now the majority of the rides here in Planet Snoopy, parents can ride with their children. However, uh, there's just a few like Linus's Beetle Bugs that they cannot. Here's Snoopy Junction, which is a little train ride that goes around the track. Yeah. 
Here is Peanut's off-road rally. I'm not gonna show it in motion because there's only one child on the ride, but they're little dune buggies. Uh, they go around and around the circle under an umbrella. Now, as we pass underneath the track of our next attraction, it's called a disco coaster, but it, it's not a roller coaster, uh, but it's a very fun ride. You sit back to back seating, kind of like a pirate ship. It is Surf Dog. And check out this photo op if you want to get a selfie. Look at this guy. He's so cool. That's a fun sign with Snoopy there in his little wetsuit. As you can see, it uh, slowly rocks back and forth before getting over the hill while spinning. Here's Snoopy's Space Buggies, which is a uh, bounce around type of attraction as you see. You bounce quite a bit around. Uh, parents, definitely try this one out with your kids. It is uh, meant for kids, so if an adult rides, which has to be in the back seat, it's uh, actually like extremely aggressive. Before we head to the rest of Planet City, they have this really cool photo op, basically a uh, homage to Hanabanera land, which is uh, what this Kidland used to be originally, and they have this Snoopy boutique where you get all your Snoopy. Here's the Phoenix 500. It must be less than 54 inches for this one, but uh, parents, if you're watching this and you remember it, let me know what you wrote it as because it has had, I think, like four, five, six names, and it dates back maybe 1972. It is one of the oldest rides here. So it's one of these little car rides. It's just on a track. It has a little Sally sticker on the side. And then it goes up this little helix and then back down. All above us is the Woodstock's Whirlybird, a little monorail ride that takes you around the other half of Planet Snoopy that we'll be checking out now. Fun little monorail ride. There are little pedals, but they don't do anything. Just... And here is Snoopy versus the Red Baron, which is a Dumbo type of attraction where you can pull back on that stick to go up or uh, let it stay down the entire ride. Here's our 15th roller coaster in the park, Woodstocks Express, our final wood coaster. It used to be called Beastie. I wish it still was, but it isn't. But it has miniature trains that are just like the racer in the Beast. It takes you up about 30, 40 feet and drops you down. And here you can take a good look at how far around the area the uh, Woodstock Whirly Worlds goes. It's currently not uh, working. Is that the problem? But uh, here's a Joe Cool's Dodging School, which is a miniature little bumper car ride for the, for the little kids. Is no adults allowed. The smoking area is so there you go. Free for all, no island, so no one way. They just get to do whatever they want. And these silly little bumper cars, they're so cute. We're almost done, but first, check out this awesome photo op here with Snoopy. I prefer you don't climb them, but I see it all the time, for sure. So we have uh, a few more rides. Let's uh, show you them over here, and then we'll head back to our last roller coaster. Here's Charlie Brown's Wind Up, which is just a teeny little swing ride that goes around and around. Not much to uh, talk about there. And if you need first aid or to nurse or to change diapers, all that type of stuff, you can do it right here at the entrance or exit, Planet Snoopy and International Suite. The suite spot is down there. We'll show you that in a moment. But finally, not technically really part of Planet Snoopy, but here it is, Blue 
Blasters on Boo Hill. It's their interactive shooting dark ride. It used to be the Phantom Theater. Hopefully it is the Phantom Theater again at one day. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, you go inside and there's lots of ghosts to shoot and targets to hit and you get a score. Here's the uh, carousel in here. Not really themed to Charlie Brown in any way, but they do call it the character carousel. Uh, just saying, just really not any characters on it. Kind of misleading. Got horses. Those are fun. And then our final ride in our 16th roller coaster, the Great Pumpkin Coaster. There's a lot of rules to this one. You have to be at least 36 inches tall to ride. Guests between 36 and 40 must be accompanied by a companion. So coaster enthusiasts, you have to have a kid to ride with this one. A very simple oval with a few drops and dips along the way. That's 16 roller coasters. The whirly birds are working again. But uh, I'd love to get some blue ice cream. This is another place where you can get the blue ice cream. And then we're gonna go check out International Street. Now you may notice a Chick-fil-A at the exit of Planet Snoopy. This is no longer, this has moved out of the park and Tom and Chi has moved from its previous locations, which we'll just show you now. And that is now a cocktail bar, by the way. And uh, another place I really enjoy, I usually get it every time, is uh, Tom and Chi grilled cheese, grilled donuts. Uh, yeah, yeah, so good. And pretty affordable for uh, in the park here. So to end up this tour, got to go down International Street. There are two gift shops. We're going to go clockwise, as I always do. And we'll check out Kingtown Collections. So here is all of these signs. The longitude latitude of uh, King's Island. These use these like, wooden things. They are cheap. 13 bucks for that. Blue ice cream one. Also $13. Also, I highly suggest this book. I think I'm going to get it. It's really good. I, I paged through it a lot during a ride downtime last year. And it was so much inside detail. So, we're going to see some of this merchandise as we make our way down International Street. But we'll show you more of these displays later on. But they do have a bunch of the cutouts displayed. I don't think you can buy this anymore. It was limited edition. And there's what the Parkscape looks like. Which is a retro Parkscape, so it has like older attractions. As we make our way down the left side of International Street, you're gonna see a Skyline Chili that is no longer there. The other location still does exist in the Coney Mall, but this is now the Grain and Grill, which came from King Samin. So I'm just gonna show you my excerpt from the tour that I did at King Samin because it's almost the same menu. The Grain and Grill International Kitchen is absolutely fantastic. One of many really cool restaurants here. It's just such good food. All on the dining plan, either the season or all day. It's really good. Like, highly suggest this restaurant. Now here's a look at the menu. I tried everything here, more or less. Everything's amazing. And then we have a Starbucks coffee, which is, you know, pretty standard there. Love the fountains. They're one of the best things about King's Island. Like what they did recently, changing them up. I liked what was there before, but uh, it was a nice upgrade a couple of years ago. And then you have the Wishbone Grill, where you can get some of those smoked turkey legs. And there's a performer going along. Getting, getting, getting terrific bacon on a stick. Oh. I would have gotten that, but it don't seem to be open today, unfortunately. They have Auntie Anne's, and then we can walk all the way through. So we're just doing a really quick walk through of the gift shop, and then we're going to go back down. International Street the other way, and close up this tour of 
one of the best parks in the country, Kings Island. So, all right. It's about three or four different sections. The first section you're gonna come along to is all, all your squishimals, or squishmallows. They do have some that are themed to Kings Island, like blue ice cream and Orion. I believe this is Mystic Timbers. Yes, Mystic Timbers, series one. So they're so squishy. They of course have a bunch of magnets for most of the rides, as you can see. I have my favorites. I wanted to get that one and I got shut down because Ariel was like, my fiance was like, that is too big for our house. You do not have any space left on the fridge. Still have lots of merchandise for like Mystic Timbers and you're always gonna get your merchandise for the beast. You have hats, you have these fantastic posters by Made for Thrill, which is a great story. You got didn't like the merchandise that Parks were giving, so he made his own. He kind of made it on the down low, and then uh, Parks took notice and asked for official stuff to be made. They do the pins, if you're into that type of thing. And then you have a bunch of the ride shirts for all the rides. A stat shirt for everything. That's a lot of stats. If you're into stat shirts, that's, that's the one for you. And then all the Ananos and cutouts. As you say, you can't get every single one at the same store. So if you're looking for a particular one, be sure to keep looking around. Uh, you can get both of the retro Kings Island and the, the current day Kings Island, which features Son of Beast, King Cobra, Firehawk, Vortex, the original bat, the Skyride, and the Screaming Demon, the Shuttle Loop. Homage is a Ohio company that uh, creates these cool shirts, very retro, kind of made in the uh, vein of when uh, these rides were made. Lots of stuffed animals and stuff that kind of is Kings Island, but kind of looks like a Simply Southern, kind of a take on that. And then we get to your basic Kings Island shirts over there. They're usually really cheap and uh, Snoopy stuff. And then it ends with a candy store. And then they have a glass blower uh, thing where you can get customized glass art. Also at the end of Inner Street on the left is this funnel cake shop. Eiffel Tower sure looks good, doesn't it this year? Wow. All right, let's head over to the other side of Main Street. First off is the International Soda Place, which currently is doing off the rails, which is your extreme bike and skateboarding and uh, roller skating show. Get some amazing popcorn that's smelling really good. The fresh corner, which you can get some nice little sweets and treats, French inspired. Unfortunately, the French corner is not open today, so we can't show you it, but we're gonna enter into the sweet spot. As you see, you get all the candy from the sweet spot. Where is your sock candy? More squishmallows. More squishmallows. Get fudge. Uh, candy by the pound. And then more treats back here. The decadent treats, the special stuff. Here's your fudge, cotton candy. Get it. The package there. And then all types of fudge, like vanilla, walnut, birthday cake, cotton candy, orange creamsicle. Oh my. Fresh fudge. They make it here. Here is the bakery of all the fun stuff. All right, we're gonna pick up this tour where we left it off. It is nighttime now. They have some great nighttime entertainment and uh, you should definitely check it out. And International Street is just beautiful at night with all the lighting. Uh, the show lighting just turned off and the, the lighting that's normally on just show, turned on. But yeah, uh, unfortunately by the time this video is up, the 50th anniversary, I think nighttime show is done, but hopefully they bring it back in some form next year. Uh, just, you know, not emphasizing the 50th as much. Having the drones and stuff again would be great. But uh, here's great, great, graters ice cream. I believe this is a uh, Cincinnati local ice cream joint, which is great. 
They have a Cinnabon, another La Rosa's pizza. The park is now closed, so everything is closed. But uh, I mean, you don't really need to know anything other than the fact that it's a Cinnabon. Prices are more than they would be outside of a theme park for sure. And then they have a Build a Bear workshop. If you didn't notice, there is a restaurant above the the main entrance. Unfortunately, uh, that's not something you can actually do. It's more of a banquet hall. I, I really wish they would turn it into a restaurant and full service. That would be fantastic. Kings Island, you should do that. Here's home. There's the really southern stuff. And more coaster stuff. Like this one, it's like the 8 bit with all the logos. There it is. This shirt I have for Ryan. There it is. And then here's Essentials, the last gift shop, which I think we're going to see pretty much the same stuff that we've seen all around the park. As I said, once, once you get around the park and through four or five gift shops, uh, you, do, you see pretty much the same stuff over and over again. But occasionally I'll find one shirt that just said one shop for whatever reason. So I always like to check them all just in case. Here's a quick look at the drone and fireworks show from last year. As I said, it seems like it's pretty similar to this year's. They just took out a lot of the 50th anniversary narrative. So great to see they returned it to the park this year and hopefully it becomes a staple in the future. I apologize the video went so long, but as you saw, there was a lot to show you and uh, it couldn't even fit in Soak City. So that's a separate video, of course. Anyways, uh, this has been Alex. Like, comment, and subscribe because we do plenty of vlogs, tours, construction updates here on the Coaster Spot.